Hi everyone. Welcome to Stephen classes. Due to lockdown, many of our students are not getting regular classes. They are all depending on online video lessons. So I will be providing some theory classes for these students of CBSE as well as state board. So starting from today, I will be giving two or three sessions from each chapter. We will begin with the first chapter itself. Our first chapter is human reproduction. Right. First of all, what is reproduction? What do you mean by reproduction? Reproduction is producing progeny which is similar in characters of their parents. I repeat, producing progeny which is having similar characters of their parents is called reproduction. In this chapter, we discuss mainly human reproduction, right? So, to talk more about human reproduction, you should know how reproduction is classified. In your classes, uh, you have studied about the classification of reproduction. Reproduction can be classified in asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. So, remember, two types of reproduction are the Asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. In the case of asexual reproduction, only one individual is involved. So here I have given you a slide showing asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction, only one individual is involved. So it is uniparental. For example, fission, budding, fragmentation, regeneration. They are all examples for asexual reproduction. But in the case of uh, sexual reproduction, two individuals are involved. Or you can say it is biparental. One is a male individual and other is a female individual. So remember, in sexual reproduction, two individuals are involved, male and female. Male individual will produce the male gamete and the female individual will produce the female gamete. Okay. So, only by fusion of the gametes, there will be a zygote and further development. So, that is for sexual reproduction. You got it? So, when gametes are produced and when they fuse, then that type of fertilization is involved. Then it is called sexual reproduction. In the case of human beings, we perform sexual reproduction. Okay. Now, what are the different ways of uh, sexual reproduction? Sometimes it is oviparous. Sometimes it is viviparous. What do you mean by oviparous? Egg-laying animals, they are said to be oviparous. Those animals which lay eggs, they are called oviparous. Birds, reptiles, amphibians, they are all oviparous, as you know. Okay. And most of the fishes are also oviparous. But in the case of uh, viviparous animals, like mammals, they give birth to the young one. So, viviparous means giving birth to a young one. So, in the case of uh, human reproduction, I repeat, human reproduction is uh, a kind of sexual reproduction and it is viviparous. So, human reproduction is sexual and it is viviparous. Okay, we have the important points in the next slide for you. Sexual reproduction, I repeat, it is uh, biparental. And here there will be formation of gametes. The two different types of gametes are male gamete which is also called the sperm cell and the female gamete is called the ovum. So these two gametes will fuse and there will be fertilization happening in the case of sexual reproduction. And human reproduction, another point is uh, about the viviparous condition. Human reproduction is viviparous. What is the definition for viviparous condition? Giving birth to a young one. Okay. So, human reproduction is uh, sexual reproduction and it is viviparous. Now, we move to the different reproductive events. What do you mean by reproductive events? The different steps involved in human reproduction. Human reproduction is having different steps like this. So, only after performing all these steps, the uh, human reproduction can be performed. So, these are the steps or events of human reproduction. 
which is the first event in human reproduction the first event in human reproduction is uh, gametogenesis what is the first step gametogenesis what is gametogenesis formation of gametes that is called gametogenesis so formation of the male gamete by the male individual and formation of the female gamete by the female individual so there will be formation of the sperm cell and ovum so that process is called gametogenesis okay now after formation of the gametes there will be another step called insemination what is insemination the male gamete has to be introduced into the female male individual will transfer the male gamete into the female genital tract and that is called insemination so what is insemination insemination it is the transfer of the sperm into the female genital tract so transfer of the sperm cell into the female genital tract that is the second step of uh, reproduction and that is called insemination so now two gametes are in the female individual both the gametes are in the female individual so afterwards what will happen after insemination there will be fertilization what is fertilization the fusion of the male gamete and female gamete this will happen in the fallopian tube of the mother okay so this will happen in the female the fusion of the male gamete and the female gamete already by insemination male gamete has reached inside the female so inside the female there will be fusion of the male gamete and female gamete and that is called fertilization and after fertilization what is formed a single cell called zygote will be formed and this zygote the single cell called zygote it will undergo repeated mitotic divisions i repeat zygote will undergo repeated mitotic divisions repeated mitotic divisions performed in the zygote that is called cleavage so now the single cell will develop into a two cell stage then into a four cell stage then eight cell stage 16 32 64 like that so these repeated repeated mitotic divisions happening in the zygote is termed as cleavage so this is the fourth even now okay now we have the implantation you know when it is a 32 cell stage when it is a 32 cell stage now that is called an embryo and that embryo will attach on to on to the uterus it will attach on the uterine wall and that step is termed as a implantation that is called implantation so attachment of the blastocyst on to the uterine wall is known as implantation and after implantation what will happen after implantation the embryo will develop in the uterus of the mother and that development of uh, embryo within the uterus of mother is termed as gestation so gestation that is development of embryo in the womb of mother uterus is also called the womb so inside the womb of mother the embryo will develop in there uh, that will take 9 months for development so this 9 months of gestation will happen further so after gametogenesis implant insemination then comes the fertilization after fertilization there is a cleavage then implantation and after implantation there is gestation now the embryo is developing inside the mother okay so now the embryo will transform into a fetus with all the organ systems developed uh, now you can call it as a fetus and the fully developed fetus it will be delivered out and that process is called parturition so the delivery of the baby is known as parturition so that is the next step parturition okay delivery of the baby now after the delivery of the baby the mother will feed it with the milk produced from the mammary gland that is the last step and that last step is called lactation so what is lactation lactation is feeding of the newborn with milk produced from the 
mammary glands. So these are the reproductive events uh, of humans. These are the reproductive events performed in human beings, starting from gametogenesis, insemination, fertilization, then comes the cleavage. After cleavage, there is implantation, and after implantation, gestation, parturition, and lactation. So these are the important events or steps in human reproduction. These steps are very important. Okay, so sometimes they will. Uh, uh, ask you to arrange the reproductive events in the correct sequence. So the sequence of the reproductive events are very important. Now we have explanation about gametogenesis. You know what is gametogenesis? Gametogenesis is the production of gametes. Production of the male gamete is called spermatogenesis. And the production of the female gamete is called oogenesis. In the case of male, the sperm cell or the male gamete is produced by testis. In the case of male, sperm cells are produced by testis and the production of the sperm cells are called spermatogenesis. What about in female? In female, the production of ova, it is done by ovary and that process is called oogenesis. You got it? So, oogenesis is the formation of ova. And formation of sperm cells are called spermatogenesis. So here, testis can be considered as the primary reproductive organ in male. It is a primary reproductive organ in male because it is an organ which produces the gamete. Any organ which produces the gamete is called a primary reproductive organ. So in the case of male, testis will be the primary reproductive organ. Whereas in female, ovary will be the primary reproductive organ okay so now we have further explanation slide this slide will give you an idea about the development okay i told you about the zygote zygote is actually a fertilized egg okay so this fertilized egg it will undergo mitotic divisions repeated mitotic divisions what is the term for repeated mitotic divisions happening in the zygote starting from the zygote Yes, that is called cleavage. So, by cleavage, the zygote will develop into a two cell stage, then a four cell stage, then eight cell stage or sixteen cell stage. Eight to sixteen cell stages, you can term it as morula. You can call it as morula. M O R U L A. Morula. Okay, we will study about it in later classes. So, after the morula stage, there is a blastocyst. What is blastocyst? Blastocyst is a condition when 32 cells are present. When 32 cells are present in the embryo, then it is called the blastocyst. So actually, after 7 days of uh, fertilization, a blastocyst will be formed. And this blastocyst is the structure which will attach onto, onto the uterine wall. So blastocyst will attach on the uterine wall. And that attachment is called implantation. You got it. So attachment of the blastocyst onto the uterine wall is called implantation. So the reproductive events uh, you should uh, remember always. So here you can see the fetus further undergoing development. And uh, it is uh, fetus after 4 weeks. This is the fetus after 10 weeks. 14 weeks, uh, 28 weeks, all these uh, different stages are shown in this picture. So it will take 9 months for development of uh, the fetus or for full maturation of the fetus. There is difference between the reproductive events happening in male as well as in female. What is the major difference here? The difference between reproductive events of male as well as female. Okay. In the case of male, the sperm formation will continue even in old men. Sperm production or spermatogenesis will continue even in the old age in the case of male. Okay. Whereas in female, the formation of the ovum, the formation of the ovum will stop when the menopause happens or when there is stopping of the menstrual cycle. So, ovum formation ceases 
ovum formation stops in women around the age of 50 years. So around the age of 45 to 50, the ovum production will stop. But in male, the sperm production will continue even in the old age. Another point is about the beginning of the gamete production. In the case of male, sperm production will start when the individual attains puberty. Sperm production starts in male when individual attains puberty. Or what is puberty? Sexual maturation. So when the individual is sexually matured, sperm production will start. Only then sperm production starts. But in the case of female, the condition is different. In the case of female, the production of the ovum or beginning of uh, gametogenesis. What is gametogenesis in female? Oogenesis. So oogenesis will begin, the initial steps of oogenesis will begin even in the embryonic life. So when a female is inside the mother's uterus, when the female is uh, developing in the mother's body, then itself, in the embryonic stage itself, in a female, their ovum production or ovum formation will begin. So ovum production or oogenesis will begin in an embryonic life. Okay, at a very early stage. I mean, before birth itself, oogenesis will begin. So oogenesis will begin in a female before birth in an embryonic life. In the embryonic life. Okay, but in male individual, the sperm production will start only when individual attains puberty. So these are the two main differences between male and female regarding reproductive events. So reproductive events are different. Okay, regarding the gametogenesis, there is a difference between male and female. You got it? So in this class, I tried to explain about the reproductive events of human individuals. Reproductive events of humans. So in the next class onwards, we will have discussion of the male reproductive system and then female reproductive system and also the different functions of the male and female reproductive systems. So this was only an introduction of our first chapter. We will be back with uh, more lessons, more classes. Until then, it's goodbye from Stephen Classes.